When I was younger and, and studying, um, I did a science degree and I was very involved in the OTC, the Officers Training Corps and the TA. My life just didn't look as though it was pointing towards anything religious or churchy at all. Um, so I think it's given people a, quite a shock who've known me earlier. I was what I considered to be a normal person, had a rather extensive social life. I had a partner and a house and a dog. And after uh, my degree, I, I started teaching and youth work and everything was quite normal until God intervened and look at me now. When I first came, there were so many things that were different, but also in some ways the same, that nothing was entirely surprising until I got to clothing. And then I was really surprised at how difficult I found that because I was still in the process of thinking um, at that point, wanting to be a nun, but when it came to putting the habit on, I thought, gosh, I've got to look like a nun as well. And that, that's actually really sort of freaked me quite a bit, you know, the fact that I couldn't just sort of wear jeans and normal clothes. So that was a surprise to me how, um, yeah, <laughs> how scary that that's part of the process was, but it was okay once I got over it. <laughs> It is a very structured lifestyle, so we follow a timetable. Um, the life is actually very balanced. The time's divided into little blocks of silent, solitary prayer, of prayer as a community together, praying the Divine Office. We have Mass every day. But in between we work, and we try and work alone and in silence wherever that's possible. In many ways, it's actually a very normal life. The, the, the tasks of everyday life for a big group of people are, are there and need doing. But we try and keep a climate of prayer and of silence and of reflection so we're not distracted by background music, by TV. We don't talk outside of specific times unless necessary. It's a life apart from the busyness of life in the world. Not because we're rejecting that, but because we actually need the freedom to live this life of prayer more intensely. I think the church, and in fact the world, need there to be communities of people who live apart as we do and make ourselves more available to God. People that don't take on other commitments um, so that we can be more free to focus on the life of prayer. We're not doing it for our own spiritual perfection. We're not doing it to sort of climb to the top of the ladder on our own. We believe that prayer actually affects the whole world and incredible though it seems, any one person making themselves open to God in prayer is somehow giving God a way into helping and healing the world because God's chosen to involve people in that work. It's the kind of graciousness of God that he wants us to help him. Um, it's not saying that we're any better at prayer than anybody else, but that we've got the privilege of a life that makes it perhaps more possible. Um, and without that belief in the effectiveness of prayer, actually this life doesn't make sense. <laughs>